What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell podcast. I have to get used to saying that. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio with Mark and Lena Cummings. Mark and Lena, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much. It's awesome to have you. So I was actually on, well, let me just give you guys your bio real quick first. Um, So Mark and Lena have a uh, YouTube channel channel called transition radio show which i was on which we had a profound really phenomenal podcast which i was so honored to be on with them what was that about a month ago just about yeah yep just about a month ago and they really moved me and i'm going to get to their story in a second and i said oh my god i'm bringing you guys on my podcast so that you guys can talk about your life story and all the people that you've impacted in such a positive way and i just wanted to say before i get into who these guys are these are two amazing souls uh, they're very, very aware. They're very, very, I call hyper-conscious. Uh, they get the purpose of why we're all here as human beings. And, you know, they'll tell their story here in a second. But uh, here's their bio. So Mark and Lynn Cummings, they're a couple with a trans history who have overcome many struggles, which have now become their strength. I can attest to that. They're very strong beings, soul beings. Uh, we are truth seekers and we live our life based on heart and growth. And that is absolutely true. And as I told my wife about both of you guys, that you guys profoundly impacted me the first time that we did our show together. And I really learned a lot. And I saw the love that you guys truly share for one another. And I told my wife, I was like, you know, they're really change makers in what you guys are doing, because you guys are really shining light. You're a beacon. And so so with that said, it's an honor for you guys to be here. But before we jump into the topics, you know, just how did you guys get here talking to me on this podcast here today? Well, we've been watching some of uh, Jeffrey Daugherty. Yeah. Um, I always get his last name. Darty. Darty. Yeah. And we saw some of the stuff he did with you, and we were really interested in, in what you had to say in your growth. There was something that really kind of drew me towards you. I, I'm i very empathic, and I kind of like feel energy and, and, and certain things like that. And and that's how we ended up asking you to be on the show, or, cause, or actually you – somehow, some way said that you would like to be on the show. Absolutely. And I don't know, I think things just happen. I think that there are certain people that are meant to connect. And speak. for sure, yeah. for sure, by the way, for sure. And that's exactly what happened. I reached out to you and I felt your energy. I read some of your stuff on your Facebook page and I felt the same thing. And I reached out to you. I was like, Hey man, you do a radio show, bring me on. I want to talk. And I had no idea that you guys, you know, had your past or background again. And I, obviously I'm a person you guys already know. I don't label yeah. or judge. I don't have, you know, preconceived notions. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up obviously in a very large family with, you know, nine kids, 10. My mom actually gave birth to 10, very Catholic, very regimented, you know, but I left all that nonsense very early because like you both, um, I'm an advanced soul and, you know, we don't all figure that out right away. Some of us do, right? Like I, you know, my story is I ran out of church at seven years old. My dad chased me out of the back. What are you doing? I'm not going back there, dude. (laughs) You know, very, how many kids can say that? But like, I kind of accepted that I was not like everybody else at an early age. You guys obviously have that whole story, which you're about to tell. Um, But let's, you know, let's just first, first, let's just get into a little bit of your story. Okay. And you guys can go both go whatever you can take turns or you can tell your story combined or whatever, but just, you know, talk about life, what life was like for you guys when you both figured out that you wanted to be from an expression standpoint, different than how you were born. Well, it's, I'm going to, you want to go ahead and go first? Okay. okay. From a very young age, I always knew that I wasn't the same as everybody else, not any special or anything like that, just very different. And it was very apparent to me by, how other people navigated life and how I saw the way they navigated it was like the same, right? Like religion, um, how people treated each other. I died when I was uh, one years old and they brought me back to life. So I think that I, when that happens, that you kind of taste the other side, side of, you know, what happened, what happened to you? 
I had some sort of like seizure and literally died and they revived me. They don't know what it was. My mother took some sort of um, estrogenic um, medication to prevent miscarriages. Um, so I was a very sick child. Wow. You know, and I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. My parents were always arguing. My father was an alcoholic. My mom had thyroid problems. It was always drama issues in life. So I became in introverted. I didn't trust people. I mean, I didn't even trust the people that brought me to this world, never mind right. anything else. But I always knew that I was different. And um, it wasn't until I was like 38 years old when I decided to make my insides match my outsides. Because I never felt girly, girly. I was being pushed to live that kind of girly, girly life, but it didn't feel right to me. So I proceeded to do what I needed to do to align myself from my inner spirit to what the world sees in these meat suits. Right. Right. Okay. I don't take the meat suits that serious because I think that's all part of the, the drama the or the, the, the illusion. Absolutely. Of but, you know, I believe that there's certain things that we have to do with these meat suits to reach a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. We need these bodies and we need them to work properly. We need to be aligned. I don't have all the verbiage because we could spew away all sorts of words, but there are certain things that words don't do justice. Very well said. And I grew up in a very, like, a very functioning, normal type of an environment. Um, I was brought up in a Christian household. Uh, I was raised to, you know, go to church and be a good kid. And I went to Christian school, got educated and, you know, even went to Christian university, worked in Christian television. Um, so I was a conformist. I was of the mindset that God was not all right with me thinking the way I was thinking that I should have been. And for a long time, that really dominated my thought process, the way I looked at life, um, closeting myself and being an introvert as well, hiding, you know, by, um, you know, just wanting to stay in my room all the time, not wanting to be very social, um, not really connecting with people. And um, I really had a problem with guilt. I felt like I was going to go to hell for feeling the way I, I did um, because I was very confused about God, why did you make me this way? Right. If I feel like this, you know, and the parents were very, you know, I mean, Latin American parents in Southern California going to an assemblies of God church. And it was, it was a challenge because I knew that I didn't want to live this life the way I was living it and expected to perform my duties as the gender that I was assigned as birth, you know, and basically I was just a conformist. I just compromised and I just gave in all the way till like I was 43. I was back in 2014, 2013. And, um, I had married, I had children, um, it was a very challenging time because I always thought that maybe by doing this, this would cure me. This would allow me to live my life and that God was going to fix what was wrong with me. And that I thought right. I had a way out. And as I got older, I just, I didn't find a way out. It was like a suppressing feeling that I knew I needed to come, come to terms with and accept and i told my then spouse of like 13 or 14 years back in 2011 that i didn't feel connected to this life that i was supposed to be living and i i had to transition and it was not something that was taken lightly it was very damaging and destructive because we had a family she had her ideas of what life was going to be and it was very destructive what i was basically you know telling her was going to occur and to this day uh we don't talk to this day the children that i have i have no communication with them um so I've lost, yeah i lost them i've i've lost everything except for him you know and Life has been 
a challenge, um, but after meeting him, it's been just a beautiful realization that this is who we are, yeah. you know, this is who we've become. And life is meant to um, allow us to grow through all these challenges and, and things. I love my kids. I wish I could see them. I wish I could be in their lives. And when you talk about your kids and losing them in a yeah. very bad divorce and everything, my heart goes out to you because I understand and I, under and I know to a different degree what you feel like and how painful it is to lose those that mean so much to you. How old are your children, Lena? My, well, my oldest is um, 22, 23. Um, and my youngest is gonna be, I think 11. Yeah, so I have five. And so, did, so does your, does your, um, does your spouse still prevent is, is creating parental alienation and all that kind of stuff? There is no communication. According to my, my spouse at the time, she told me that there would be, if I chose to transition, there would be little to no communication with the children. And that was, that was the way that she was going to be able to make me suffer for ruining her life. So she's obviously a very low vibration being because no one, I mean, again, and I have experience firsthand with this. Sure. No one would prevent um, your children from interaction unless you were not of the light. I mean, I, I hate saying that because I don't know that person at all, but you know, whatever vibrate, whatever fear vibration that person resonates in, you know, they're blocking the natural, you know, cohabitation or communication or connection that you should have as a parent, you know, because I mean, as you guys know, we're going to talk about transgenerational trauma. And I don't mean trans in your trans way. I mean, like trans is that it, you know, comes, comes through multiple generations of families, but mm -hmm. you cannot blocking a parent from sp spending or experiencing time with a child, whether or not you hate um, your parents or not, you know, and I've had problems with my parents and I've come to an understanding and an acceptance and an allowance and all those things of who they are, what they represent. But, you know, I've learned that you're blocking energy because those people you you know brought or or or, or was you know co was co conductively brought those beings into this reality and so for you not to be able to you know be in their energy and enjoy their presence and communicate connect and all those things is not good for them it's obviously not good for you um but it's again the person is blocking it is the real problem they're interfering with a natural cycle of energy by doing that. And that comes back to haunt them later on. Oh, absolutely. No, and, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I notice that a lot of individuals that follow a religious dogma tend to always do that. They're a stumbling block on everyone, whether they're gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. They're always attacking individuals that are not like they want them to be. And that's the ideology, ideological basis of the separation because in Christianity, there is, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, excommunication where Catholics will not allow, you know, people to remain Catholic if they do certain things that break the church's rules and stuff. And I grew up in a very strict environment um, you know, boys are boys, girls are girls, you know, this is how life is. Machismo was taught, you know, and all of that in, yeah. in my culture growing up. And it was definitely a no go with what I was doing. And I was painted as the villain, as the person who was the destructive party. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that these religious ideologies are the true destructors absolutely. of, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're the origin point. Again, all of it, politics, money, you know, debt. It's all the same. It's all the same, right? It's all yeah. the enslaving mechanisms. But there's so much I can talk to you guys about that, but we have to keep it under an hour. Or yeah, right. The average attention span will fall off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, okay, so we have a bunch of bullet points, but. I love you guys and we're going to go wherever, but the, the, what, what's important is, and I had the same point 
and we ended the show, me and Robert Stanley just did a podcast together about this. And I know you guys, because Mark, you and I profoundly connected on this last time, but you guys are literally the perfect example of this. Until you love and trust yourself, you can't love and trust anybody else. Exactly. That's right. So realistically, you guys had to do what you had to do to love and trust yourself. So anyone who judges you for that is just, uh, oh, let me be the guy to say it. Not loving and trusting of themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that not the truth? It's totally, totally the truth. And I think a lot of these religious group want to make you hate yourself. Of course. And that's, that's their main goal. And until you learn to put all that, those messages aside and realize how wonderful you are. And that's the biggest right. message right. that we have for people is, you know, you have to love yourself. And it's loving yourself, to right? do that. And loving yourself sometimes right. means pushing away those people that are a stumbling block in your life. It doesn't mean you're selfish. It doesn't mean you hate them. You love yourself so much and you love them so much that you need to push that negative energy away or it will destroy both of you. Right. The, whatever we call them, the dark energy, those who would hold us back, the people, the beings, the energy that controls religion and spirituality, you know, not spirituality of like the spirituality that we put uh, practice but the spirituality it's not even spirituality right like actually i can make an argument that religion suppresses true spirituality because yeah, it teaches I, victim it teaches victim consciousness and low vibratory you know fear mm -hmm. guilt prison control as you know jeff and i used to say on our show behavior right because it makes people think that oh well if i act a certain way i'm going to be rewarded in the next go round right which is all fucking bs so it's it's true you know like the, the, the real statement, whatever Christ was, whether it was, a, whether it was a made up being or a spiritual avatar that was in every culture, there was only one statement, in my opinion, that ever came out of him that was worthy. And, and, and it was the kingdom of God is within. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you realize that, and that, by the way, is nothing is more strongly intuited from people that actually have you know, a high vibration and a high inner awareness, you cannot be religious. And so, or, or go to worship, you know, churches and worship because you definitely know that there is no purpose for any of those places other than for mankind to manipulate your thoughts, hearts, actions, ideas, and of course also financially manipulate you. And again, you know, these are tough words and I'm going to get attacked and I don't care. But it's true. You get deleted. You know, I don't even respond. It doesn't matter. Your vibration is below my vibration. You just get deleted. Mm -hmm. But most people don't want to talk about the reality that religion is total fraud. Totally. And that, yes, there are fundamental teachings in all spiritual um, beliefs, practices, and knowings that can be applied. But when you are of the mindset that, you know, again, religion is teaching you to pay for your quote unquote sins, grievances, you know, uh, mistakes, whatever you want to call it, you know, in the event that you're going to get better later, you're just buying into, again, the victim consciousness vibration that resonates, you know, for the majority of humanity. And that whole divide, so they will conquer, they get people to fight amongst each other. In, right. Even in the LGBTQ community, people are fighting each other. Because that's, that's what they want. They want that, whole, you know, that drama, that, that lower vibration so people don't wake up, so people don't get in tune with their inner selves. Right, right. Yeah. So the one, one of the point, one of, oh, go ahead, Lana, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, there's a siphoning that happens when people do gather in big congregational settings. I mean, you're, you're talking about like anything from like a football game where, you know, the, 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 <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. You know, I used to work in sports television. The bread, the bread, the bread and circus. That's what right. it is. Yeah, you could feel that energy. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. the same thing happens in a worship service where they strike up the feel and everybody's hands are raised and, you know, they're mining all this, all this energy mm -hmm. that people totally have. Mining it. I mean, listen, let's just be honest. I can say this with you guys. I mean, it's awesome to go back to back podcasts now you know, and not be talking to doctors all the time about this, but listen, the reptilian mm -hmm. control grid 
it's so out in the open now. There's been amazing authors, you know, one of which I, you know, interviewed Pierre Sabak. I mean, it's so obvious now that they were the original beings on this planet. They, you know, the dinosaurs, whether the dinosaurs are fake or not, there were dragons, reptilians, reptoids, whatever. They're still here. And they feed as exactly what you just said off of our karmic energy. And they have created this giant phys- prison fear and guilt, guilt control matrix of reality to harness our negative emotions to keep us in again the fear you know low red orange Mm -hmm. chakra root chakra vibrations and it's like you and i we all three of us we can have these conversations and we and and you guys don't laugh or shake your head or say oh my god he's a conspiracy theorist i mean we know that this is what is real now and again a whole large majority if not everyone in the next couple of years when all this shit show crumbles Mm-hmm. is going to have to face the reality that that's exactly what's been going on here. Mm-hmm. And you know, again, you know, when this thing runs in a month or two, whenever we run this podcast, people will attack us and say, Oh my God, you've jumped the shark, Jay. You're talking about reptiles or reptilians or reptoids. And then they'll be like, show me a reptilian, you know? And I'll be well, like, I'll tell them it's, it's the God that you worship your own Yahweh is a reptilian. Right? Well, exactly. I'm literally going to be like, well, they're going to be in just for a wait. rude awakening, a rude awakening. You just, know wait. Yeah. just wait, just yeah, wait, just exactly. wait. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's so true. We're seeing it know. now. We're seeing in what's happening. These are growing pains. These are, are. consciousness is evolving and returning yes. to what it was because exactly. we were once very aware and awake. We got dumbed down. Our DNA got messed with. Yes. We're seeing in what we're seeing with the transgender community coming. Yes. Up. There's like many, many children that are going. This is not who I am. Right. You know, now they're trying to twist things around. They're trying to, the religious and the, the radical feminists. There's a lot of groups that are part of the darkness. <laughs> and they don't realize what they're doing. Or maybe they do. But they're creating all this ruckus. And they have zero clue of the science. And, and when you give me the go, I like to, like, explain. Because I know there's a lot of people that don't understand this. And no, please, no please, please, please explain. But before you do, let me just set this. Because I, I, I'm in 100% agreement with what you just said. They, they, those who would hold us back, the dark forces, the reptilians, and they may even be gone. It may just be their progeny now, their royal families and all that. They are literally in total confusion. Mm-hmm. The energy, the new cosmic central spiritual sun energy is hitting this planet right now. It hit in 2012, as we all know, but nothing happened because we weren't ready. Most people are still resonating in fear consciousness, victimhood. So, but it is now slowly changing. So yes, we do know that there's going to be massive wholesale change. It's happening right now around us in every institution. It just, Mm -hmm. again, are you observant or are you aware? So I wanted to say all those things because you're absolutely right. The confusion, they're literally attempting to create total destruction. They are trying to blow up, eliminate the planet, kill all organic life, you know, basically eradicate humanity humanity not just humanity but human um experience human creativity human creation they're, they're, they're trying to wipe the whole thing out so you're right it's a lost explosive event where again acrimony two sides like you said divide and conquer that's all they're doing right now so it's like we all know it's going to come to an end before in my opinion they can create or you know actually get what they want ultimately our destruction uh, but in the meantime, as it all unravels, it's going to be interesting. So anyway, please feel free to explain tra- so, you know, just the idea of what you want to talk about. We have some bullet points here, some things. Like please do. when you look at a young boy or a girl, that little, right? They don't have any sexuality yet because that's, you know, that's not even in the equation. Right. Right. But a little boy could be very feminine or a little girl could be very masculine. Right. So. These, uh, you know, the little boy wants to dress in, in, in dresses and a little girl wants to be a little tomboy or whatever. The, there's definitely a, um, a mismatch between their biological sex and their gender identity, right? Sure. There's, this is something that um, it's palpable. Right. I mean, little boys just don't do that just for the heck of it, you know? Right. They try to say, well, it's, it's a nurturing. No, it's innate. Right. It's innate. It's something that you see. I mean, from the time I was little, I was always you know, very masculine, you know, right. my mom tried to break my spirit. People don't realize that it is not as rare as I think it is with this transgender um, phenomenon, I guess we could call it. There's sure. one out of 200 male to female and one out of 400 females to male. Wow. I mean, this is, I mean, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. Now, 
I know that they're, they're saying that, okay, this is an agenda. Is, and I'm saying, is it really the agenda or is it the agenda of the religious to bring this down, to not allow this to take place? Because last I checked, this Yahweh is the one that divided the male from the female. It's even in the Bible. There's a lot of quotes in there. You know, we, I believe totally we were once one and we got divided, right? So let's look at some, um, you want to? Well, it suggested that genes that influence sexual identity are positively selected in the other sex. Feminine women and masculine men may partner earlier and may have more kids to whom they pass on their gender identity gene variants. So you look, you look at whether female relatives of like trans women and the male relatives of trans men on average have more children because it's like they, they have like this, this desire to want to reproduce, you know, they, they have this loving gene that just spends its time, you know, like just disseminating itself among the family. And, you know, the trans women that get it, the sisters that get it, they create big families, trans women that get it, they transition, you know, and, and vice versa with trans men. But it's, it's all found on a gene. There's a gene called the SRY gene, which is found in the Y chromosome. It triggers the formation of testes in embryo. These testes make hormone, and the hormones make the baby a male. Now, there are indeed variants of this SRY gene. Some don't work at all, and babies who have a Y chromosome but a mutant SRY gene are born female. Interesting. So, More recently, particular genes have been studied in detail in trans women and trans men. And one study looked at associations like between being trans and particular variants of some genes in the hormone pathway. So mm -hmm. a recent and much larger study assembled samples from 380 trans women who had a planned sex change operation. And they looked at the fine detail and they noticed that there were 12 usual suspects of genes that were involved in the hormone pathways. It's like and they found that these trans women had high frequency of particular DNA variants of four genes that would alter sex hormone signaling while they had been developing in utero. So this is not like something that we just make up. These are, yeah. things that, you know, there's a neurological reasoning, there's hormonal reasoning, there's like all sorts of different things. Now, there may be many other genes that contribute to a feminine or a masculine sexual identity. Sure. They're not necessarily all concerned with sex hormone signaling some may affect brain function and behavior. But sexual identity genes don't have to be on sex chromosomes. We know very little about sex chromosomes and the study of genetics and everything. It's still in a very much of an infancy stage, right? So yeah. they will not necessarily be in sync with having a Y chromosome and on an SRY gene. So this is in line with observations that gender identity is, is separable from biological sex. And if you notice, all men have a line in their scrotum. Originally, that was the labia minora. Right. The, the, the glands um, clitoris turns into the penis. Right, exactly. Okay, so why do men have nipples? Right. Because we're all genetic, we all start as a default, differentiated, we could either be male or female, both, you know, have like, have different qualifications. Right but it's not as black and white as they want us to believe. Well, and also I know too, just from the bodybuilding community that women that take too much, you know, abuse testosterone or whatever, literally their clitoris becomes like a penis. It becomes right. like an appendage of a penis. So yeah, there's no question. And, 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 you know, if I can just infer where you guys are going with this and obviously I'm in total agreement. When we were originally created, we were perfect. There were no differentiation. Exactly. exactly. These goddamn demons, reptilians, Anunnaki, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck they were you know, have been literally tweaking our DNA for God knows who knows how many epics of human creation, you know, Sabak says two, there were two, and, you know, then they used the reptilian and the proto-human, which was really aquatic mammalian, yep. come up with us. I believe we're just like a hybrid. We've been experimented with, yes. you know, and toyed with, yes. and our constant search for our other half is what leads us to a lot of things. Exactly. You and know, by the way, we were perfect, God. I mean, I always tell people this all the time. God doesn't make mistakes. No. We were perfect at initiation. And then again, this, you know, whatever this is, the false light, the demiurgic construct, whatever you want to call this, that, you know, duplication, copying, 
And that's, and you're right. And they've been just tweaking us and God knows who else is involved in tweaking us. But I mean, we, we already know it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go back and look at the, the Ibis and all these different concoctions of like half animal, half human, mm -hmm. you know, the chimeras. I mean, they've done so much genetic DNA shit to us. Like, I think you're probably right. I mean, so, I mean, who's to say that you're not? You, you look at it in nature, you got fishes that actually change from being female to male, depending exactly. on what the colony needs. You look at, um, what is it, the hyena, has the spotted, the, hyena. the spotted hyena literally has a penis, right. and she gives birth through that penis. That's so there's right. like, people don't have a clue, because we've been taught black and white, but there's a lot of shades of gray. No, but the thing is, going beyond that, I remember reading in um, one of Jeff Doherty's book, I think it was the... Um, Oh gosh, it was about creation and stuff. And he was talking about the Elohim. And he was talking right. about how, you know, the Elohim actually tricked the, the Elohim, which is not really a physical being. It's, it's actually, that's what we are. We are, we are spirits, spirits, right? Yeah. spirits. We're just being contemporary, you know, temporarily stuck inside these physical bodies. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, so the truth of the matter is that this is not who we are. We are not a sex. We are not, you know, one particular version of a human. We I were. I you guys were going to come on this fucking show and blow it out of the water. Because <laughs> we that is so profound, Lena. So yeah, profound. We were. We are not these fucking bullshit bodies. Exactly. We're not. We are spirit beings. At base essence, we are literally worrying electrons. If you could peer through your body and my body and all, all three of our bodies right now, you would literally see like a golden, glowing, plasmatic, it'd probably be even blue um, fire. Like a literally like a spark of life, exactly as God created us. And literally we are in these physical bodies, these matter bodies, these low yeah. vibrational beings, which obviously we don't all resonate down here, right? Because we can choose through our spirit to resonate mm -hmm. here. But most people naturally resonate right here because that's what physical matter is. It's right. low vibratory substance. The and third dimensional realm is the lowest vibrate, vibratory field. And people don't understand the concept of God because people think God is something we need to worship. Right. God is energy. If we're going exactly, to identify what God is, God is energy. We're part of this energy. We're part yeah. of this creation. We fragmented. Exactly. We got like literally pulled apart and exactly. us trying to bring ourselves back together into that one consciousness, into that one power source is what we're seeing right now. There's a lot of growing pains that's exactly. happening. You know, and people need to just remove that veil, go within and stop worshiping, worshiping outside of you because that's giving your power away. Dude, God is literally the unified field. Exactly. It is the universal unifying source of all information, of all life, of all things. You know, people talk about all the time in the new age community, we're all connected, we're all one. Well, we are because that energy of source is the unifying field it really right. is i mean you know they they you know obviously einstein was probably paid off or was a stooge himself i mean who knows but i mean burfield brown if you follow the history of quantum physics and the and, and the unified field theory they knew everything in the 20s but it was suppressed by them right. they weren't allowed you know the energy the energy barons and the tyrants you know they suppressed tesla they suppressed everything but they knew what the unified field was 100 years ago Exactly. And it was suppressed. And it's like, we still are given this bullshit physics, you know, the bullshit, probably the whole, you know, center of the world spinning dome balls is a bunch of bullshit too. I mean, pretty much everything. Everything. Is. And then this whole kumbaya, like we're supposed to like, everything's supposed to be peaceful with every, you can't appreciate the day if there's not night. Energy yeah. could be like, like fire, you know, you get a, a lightning a bolt, volcanic a eruption. volcanic eruption. It's all part of understanding and not judging and labeling things right. good or bad. We're here to like really like let the hit the fan, you know, because yeah. something's happening in this evolution of our spirit that we need to experience while we're here dealing with these meat suits. I find it ironic though that, you know, growing up in a Christian household that they would be, be putting such emphasis on the blood and getting redemption through the death, sacrifice, and the murder of anything, you know. And we notice that the lowest color chakra is what? Red, Red. you know. So it's like they focus 
on eternity being based on a physical body, yeah. eternal torture being based on, you know, whether you cut and bleed and, and feel pain or not. It's literally and, blood ritual. Yeah, it's blood ritual. And the focus is on that, you know, I mean, eat the blood, drink, drink the blood, eat the body, all that stuff. Well, I mean, again, you know, you guys said it, you know, we'll, we're already, the can, the, the, worm, the can of worms, the worm can is ripped open. Yeah. Okay. The reptilians eat us. Yeah. And they eat the babies because of the encalfin, you know, the, the, uh, the emotional release, the adrenochrome, you know, the adrenaline, all the, again, the secretions, it's the secretions. It's the, it's, it's truly the endocrine system and the secretions that come out of the endocrine glands. Mm -hmm. That's what they're eating and that's what they're after. So again, yes, they set up a world where blood sacrifice, ritualistic pedophilia, torture of children, sacrifice of children, eating of children, blah, blah, blah. And again, they do control our politicians, our leaders, you know, celebrities i mean you name it right and, and again whether and again it's not worth talking about on the show but or any show but it's whether they're physically doing it or remote piloting the physical bodies because they're the masters of the waveform as sabaka said it doesn't matter the bottom line is is that we all of us at this point now can choose to wake up can choose to be like us and raise your vibration and i'm not saying if you're not high vibration i'm judging you but it's still a choice, right? You can still, people are always asking me, and you guys know this, but how do you raise your vibration? I just can't get my head around that. Well, you could start by treating people with the golden rule. Do unto others as you would like to be treated. Treat people with care, concern, kindness, you know, love, peace, forgiveness. Be acceptance of others, allowing of others, aware mm -hmm. of others. Stop, you know, closing people, judging people. You know, it's, mm -hmm. It's so easy, really, to honestly be a high, high vibration being. But again, society, social media, the vibration of red, mm -hmm. and again, all the societal people. structures, it forces people into the vacuum. Also allowing people to vibrate in their vibration because sometimes you want to like interfere, but right. then we're interfering with people's exactly. journey, their, their spiritual exactly, involvement. Dude. So mm -hmm. you cannot wake people up. You cannot yeah, wake people you can. up. Yeah, you can't force that at all because it's... It just turns around. And it's not, and you, know, you guys know this better than I do because of where you're at now and, you know, lo losing so many people that meant things to you. Um, although I've lost a lot of people too, but you guys are okay because again, you're here and this is a choice and you're okay because you know, you're who your spirit is and you know that you, what you resonate is who you attract and like attracts like, but, and Robert and I were talking about this. You can, ex you know, you, you know, Lynn, and you're a perfect example with your kids, right? Like you can, you can love them afar and send them energy, but you also know that like it could be better for them, but right. you have no right because again, it's an act of spiritual violence to attempt to make things better for them. It, you can only send them love and light and be who you are and hope, you know, that they at some point choose to wake up themselves and accept you in their life. And believe me, what comes around usually goes around. You know, Monica did not have her son for six years. And, you know, there's still a little bit of work to be done, but they're back now. And he woke up and he chose to be have his mom in his life. So I'm sure that your kids at some point will choose to have you in their life. I mean, it, it's we, just, hope. It's, we hope, but, you know, we're not. Well, like, I mean, honestly, like, it probably will happen at some point. Like yeah. the likelihood that it's not that you never see them again or never re reunite with them is very, very low. Um, but I mean, I, I, I definitely, you know, I know humanity, I know how human, human beings can be, but again, I also will resonate that the dark, the dark forces or the dark structure, or the third dimensional realm, whatever you want to call it, is going to collapse. Oh yeah. And it's very close to collapsing now. Yes. So in it and when it does collapse, those of the high vibration, we will all somehow unite. We will all resonate. Our fields, our auric fields will connect. And again, if the world is not going to end, and I don't believe that it is, I'm a glass half full guy. I believe that people like us will be the builders of the new earth. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's like this, like this book I'm reading. I, I sent this to you guys the other yeah, day, handbook mentioned. for a new paradigm, right? So amazing. Yeah. Like, how about this? It says, um, this is it's talking about the building of the new earth. This is not an esoteric process for people who are looking to give lip service and stand on the sidelines to observe. This is for visionary realists that may never actually observe the extent of the work that they will do until the very end. 
these people will be able to look beyond the chaos and recognize the opportunity. I suppose you might say these are people with one foot in each world who can look into both without losing their balance. Well, That's profound see. stuff. Yep. The reality is that those of us who are awake now and have been awake for a long time, and you guys have obviously been awake for a long time. Okay, I've been awake for a long time. Yes, we're all becoming even more conscious now because of the energy of the earth. But you guys, we're going to have a job to do and there ain't no getting out of it. Yeah. So it's going to be a matter of like, which among us, and I know who you guys are and I know who I am, but which of among us are going to choose to do right? Because you can still, even as an aware being, choose to like, not be personally accountable and responsible. And guess what? You know, Robert said it to me perfectly well in the last show or last podcast I did. He said, look, man, all this shit is going to end. Yeah. Are you going to be okay to know when it ends? And we go back to more of like a feudal communal, you know, high vibration, live off the land, none of this bullshit, dark tech. Yeah. Are you going to be okay with it? Because if you're not okay with it, well, then you're going to have to deal with the idea that you're not going to be okay with shit that doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. I mean, is there, I mean, am I wrong about that? I mean, do you guys think, I mean, do you guys think we can move into a new earth without giving up the tech? I mean, it's a, it's a good question. I, I don't think so, but I think what do you we guys can. think, I think we can give it up completely. Yeah. And I, I think, mean, yeah. and I think we are going to be that technology. I think we're going exactly. to be, to be that, supersede that supersede human I mean, capacitors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, ancient, the ancients were much more advanced than we would ever Totally, get to totally. No. And yeah. by the way, we know this is an advance. We can sit here oh, on gosh, our iPhones no. and our iMacs. I mean, this is fucking laughable shit, dude. We wow. used to be able to levitate. We used to be able to move objects. I mean, ever since I was a kid, my father would laugh at me because I would sit there for hours trying to move objects because I, it felt familiar to me. From a very young Guys, age. I'm telling you right now that all three of us can telepathically communicate with each other right now if we focus on it. I literally read my daughter's mind this morning. She attempted to lie to me, and I literally told her before she said it, I said, Don't you dare lie to me. She looked at that, me. I do that now. I yeah, do that now. She literally looked at me like she was mind blown. Yeah. I said, Gabby, who do you think I am? Yeah. I was at the top of the stairs. She yeah. literally started to go into a lie about how her sister didn't yep. have to have her room clean because her house cleaner was here because blah, blah, blah. And I just literally tapped into her mind stream and I was like, no, don't you dare say that. I know exactly what you're saying. It's a lie. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but you're right. We do have that ability, yeah. Yeah. especially right now as the veil continues to thin. Yeah. Because it's just like our DNAs are being connected and yes. like evolving, evolving completely. We, people don't have a clue. They really yeah. don't. They, they're just, they're so into the matrix. They're so into the technology, into their everyday autopilot life, that they never have a moment to like actually talk to their higher self and realize, wow, you start to listen to your higher self, you're going to get some really cool information, you know? And most people don't do that. They're mm -hmm. like, obviously always going what somebody else is telling them, what the TV's saying, what, you know, social media is saying, they never go within, you know? And I've been going within for a very long time because you, man. that was my safe haven. When I, I first met him, I was like, <laughs> well, we, we met under really trying circumstances. I, you know, connected with him on Facebook and then somehow or another, we eventually met up in New Mexico in an, in an emergency room situation. He was living in New Mexico. I had an accident, rolled down a very steep mountainside and broke my neck, my back, Jesus. three places, totally, completely, like, incapable of being, you know, saved or anything, unless somebody actually found me, and that's what happened. So, we basically met in an ICU, mm -hmm. and he that's asked awesome. me, yeah, and he asked me the question, do you want me to stay with you? Because I was in a very, I was in critical condition, I was being told I was going to need an eight-hour surgery, um, to get myself to even be able to recover even 25%, 25%, you know, he said, baby, let's just get out of here. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to work on you. And within like a month, um, things started changing. Um, I was in a brace. I was, I didn't so get awesome. surgery, but he was explaining to me, we went for a walk one day and he's like, you know, these rocks have energy, right? And I was raised in a Christian home and I was like, 
they're dead. What are you talking about? You know? And he's like, yes, they do touch them. And I was like, it was like between like two rocks, mountain, you know, yeah. like canyon thing. And I felt the electric. Oh, absolutely. Pulsing. That's how I heal oh, with your right. energy work. That's so amazing. I've been a healer since I was a little kid, you know? And that's why I could, I could see the pain, emotional pain, mental pain, everything like that. It's like, it's like a yeah. book. I, it's like a person's book. It's like right in front of me. And I'm able to tell people this is that, 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 that. I've had that gift since I was a child. But if you ask us if we're like regretful of the path that our life has taken, no. or if we're, you know, like that we wish things would have been like, I would have been born a biological female that you would have been born biological no way you no. know male this is you know who, this, this is, was what yeah. we chose yeah. exactly we and all choose must. exactly i always we say that. Mark always says that we all choose these are the paths that we choose as soul beings in physical meat suits to experience what source is intended for every being right because mm -hmm. source learns from our experiences yeah exactly where his eyes his ears is what he, it's like yeah. it's like that's why you know it's, it's, I can't even explain it because human words wouldn't give it justice, but we're collecting experience for that library. Exactly. That you tap into that library whenever you need something. And it's like the Matrix movie, you know, how like you yeah. learn how to fight. It's the same exact thing. You yeah. know, there's like, I can't explain it in, in, in typical wording because words will never do it justice. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you talk about the Akashic records or what I consider the Akashic records. Um, Dude, you know, that's so true. Like when I came back from Peru last year and I learned, you know, from working with um, our guide, indigenous guide from, um, from uh, the lake, um, Lake Titicaca. And, you know, he was talking about oh, everything is alive. Everything is sentient. Everything is conscious. I mean, we did a ceremony on the shores of Lake Titicaca and, and I felt everything. I felt every being, every rock, every ripple of the water of the lake. I mean, I, we just, he did a ceremony with us and all of us, we were all crying. It was so amazing. But like whenever I'm now in nature, I always walk up to the trees and I touch the trees and I just give the trees thanks. Yeah. And I say, thank you so much. And man, I literally now every single, almost every single time I walk under a tree, I can connect with the tree's energy. I'm not kidding you. I literally can, the tree can drop down like, you know, whatever the tree, you know, when you're, you know, when you're a kid, they probably are always exposing themselves to you. And you're, you're like, oh, it's sap or yucky and you run away, you know, and it's like, now when I get under a tree, I literally tell it to drop its divine, you know, nectar, which, you know, they all trees have that falling from them all the time. But if you get under it and you express that you want to partake in that energy and then, you know, send it back to them in a loving vibra vibratory way it's unbelievable i mean i do that every single day now like literally go out in my backyard and i sit under the tree even when it's cold mm -hmm. and um and again it's la it's not cold right but i mean it's cold it's 46 degrees um but you know it, it falls on me and uh and i just bask in it and i just you know i'm grateful for it and just say thank you you know and even when my kids were sick uh, and they're obviously totally unvaccinated, but they, you know, I think I told you guys this, they both had like really bad respiratory infections um, and they had never gotten sick in their whole life. And they came back from Vegas. Uh, my daughter was competing in a cheerleading event there like a month ago or whatever. And she came back and she, you know, her immune system was compromised. And so anyway, they both got sick. They got each other sick. They'd never been sick before. But um, I told them, you know, I went, I told them to sit under the tree and, you know, gargle hot salt water and, and, and give praise to the tree and the tree will drop its stuff on you and you'll be fine. And they, you know, they're, dad, you're crazy. I mean, they're pretty awakened beings, but you know, they're like, come on, dad. And I'm like, do it. And literally within two days, they were better. And they were both sick without doing that for five days. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of power in nature, man. We're all connected to it. Yeah, and that's one of the things that he taught me. And had I not transitioned, had I not taken the steps to do what I thought was what I needed to do for my own evolution and journey, I would never know the truth. You know, I would never had experienced true, unconditional love that this person right here has demonstrated to me throughout our whole time together. I mean, he has put me front and center. He has loved me like, you know, like Jesus, whatever, is supposed to love you, um, that unconditional love or whatever. Dude, she this still has a lot of Christian programming in her. 
No, I'm just saying. I don't. I'm agree. just playing with you. I don't agree with any of it, but yeah, that programming. No, I get it. It is a program. We all still say it. I yeah. mean, you know, if you ask Jeff, he'll say there's no such thing that that was part of the scam too. You know, and it is part of the scam. Yeah, I don't believe, I believe that, that too. Either. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there was there were avatar beings most likely that came down to attempt to let us know that this is the false light and go within, yeah. right? Because there is profound awareness that comes from it. But yeah, I mean, almost everything that has any kind of connotation in the Abrahamic religious teachings is a scam. Yeah, but it's all it's all a lie. It's all based on control, control matrix. Control. You know? And uh, control matrix. The only thing there is is consciousness, and that's energy. That's and it, we're all part of it. When you learn to tap into that. There is no and, and it's so easy to, and you know, people get all caught up in the idea of like, they have to meditate and I, I can't meditate. I'm like, dude, meditation, contemplation, going within, silencing the mind is just you detaching from the world of physical material realm. Exactly. It's just literally, you I mean, I, you know, I've gotten to the point now where I would consider myself a master of it. I mean, I can read an amazing book and be riding my exercise bike and be in a meditative state, completely mm -hmm. silence my mind, nothing distracting me. You know, um, my, the guy I did a podcast earlier this morning, very advanced being named Gunther. Um, we, ta we talked about how like, yeah, you, when you, you sync with the energetic input and the output of your body in the source field or in the, you know, physical realm where you're detached from, again, being, of this realm and you're just in this realm, you know, reading, learning and sinking your body, that's meditation or contemplation or again, silence your mind. It's the same thing. Cause like you said, it's just, it's just manipulation of energy. That's all it is. Yeah. So. It's amazing, man. You guys, this has been so amazing. So if people want to watch you guys connect with you guys online, like what's the best way that they can do that? Our YouTube channel transition radio show. Um, and uh, let's see what else we have. Yeah, Transition Radio Show will be That's the best. Pretty much. pretty much. We have all the our legs there. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, you guys, man, I, profound, profound podcast, profound awareness for me too. I'm glad you guys shared a lot of the biological stuff. Um, you guys can have the last words. Is you know Anything else you wanted to take before we ended this podcast? I just want people to realize that their sons, their daughters, their grandkids could end up becoming evolved into this gender evolution and instead of being dogmatic and judgmental and pushing them away they need your love unconditional love you may not understand it but trust that this is beyond what religion and what politics is trying to to push on people this is something very deep and love is the true answer you know? awesome do you want to add anything to that lena it's hard to be no i just wanted to say that there's nothing as a parent that you can do that would be greater than accepting and loving your children under any circumstance, in any condition. I mean, it doesn't matter if your child were to be a mass murderer, you know, I mean, it, it goes beyond, you know, it's like this otherworldly type of sense of being. And it is who we are. It is what life is all about. We are love. And that demonstration of love is so profound and it engulfs all of our being, you know, and it is what we are. It's beautiful guys, man. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Um, I really don't have anything else. I mean, obviously guys, please support um, both Mark and Lena. You can go to their, subscribe to their YouTube channel. It's obviously youtube.com um, forward slash transition radio show. Please go there and uh, support their work. And uh, let me just say, as I say, at the end of all my podcasts now, and this has been a really good one, very deep, is remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation.